Ladies and gentlemen, please take a look at the screen as I take the privilege of welcoming the Honorable Minister of State for Electronics and Information Technology and Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, Government of India, Mr. Rajiv Chandrasekharji, a man of principles, symbol of honesty, and of course, self-reliance. To welcome him, let's put our loudest round of applause together, please. <laughs> Sir, a very warm welcome to you and over to you. Thank you, uh, and uh, thank you for that warm welcome. Good evening, all. Uh, thank you, Tanmay Maheshwari ji, for inviting me to speak here today, along with all your colleagues. Uh, from your from your talk, I understand you've had a long day, and so therefore, I don't uh, want to uh, extend that too long, nor do I want to subject you to any more gyan uh, that I understand you've had uh, to uh, hear the whole day. Uh, but look, I think uh, I, I'm not sure I'm the best person to speak at a DNPA event uh, and uh, certainly uh, one where there are so many stalwarts who are in the audience. Um, but I certainly think I, I can share with you uh, what I see as the future of digital and uh, therefore uh, by extrapolation, the future of digital media. Uh, I will break this up into two short parts, I will speak to you first about how uh, I see the digital ecosystem, digital India in a sense progressing in the coming years and uh, how digital media and digital content uh, fit into that uh, overall framework that we are building and expanding. Uh, as you know, uh, Digital India is a vision of our Honorable Prime Minister. He set out uh, three broad goals in 2015. He wanted uh, digital and technologies to empower our citizens, change our governance, to improve our governance and democracy. He wanted digital to create more opportunities for our youngsters and create more entrepreneurship opportunities and expand the digital economy. And he wanted through Digital India for India to be the producer of technology rather than just be a consumer uh, in, in, the, in the years going forward. He has, uh, as you are aware, referred to the coming decade as India Decade, a decade which is opportunity rich with uh, technology opportunities and that uh, he has referred to that India Decade as our future goal and a goal that will be built by the enthusiasm and the innovation and the creativity of hundreds and thousands and lakhs of Indian, young Indians from across the country. But in the, uh, in, the, in the overall scheme of things, we are today at about 800 million, 80 crore Indians online, making us one of the largest uh, connected nations in the world. We are one, clearly one of the largest connected, not, not one of the largest, but the largest grouping on the internet because the Chinese internet is really not the internet and it's a walled off uh, intranet. So if you consider that amongst the world's open societies and open nations where media counts, where information is the right of every citizen. Uh, India certainly is uh, the largest uh, connected nations and the largest informed society on the global internet. The internet, uh, as it was, let us say, a decade ago, is not the internet that we see today. It is a lot more complex. And with the advent of 5G, the complexity of the internet uh, and the participants in the internet will become even more diverse. The internet, which was blandly referred to as, uh, as uh, where there was a definition of intermediaries in the 22 year old IT Act, uh, which basically qualified the internet and one class of uh, companies or platforms that sat on the internet as intermediaries has become uh, certainly in the last two decades, a much more complex thing with a much more diversified set of applications and platforms that characterize the internet today. Going forward, it is very clear that AI, the Web3, um, and uh, many, many other trends, the sharper, cheaper, smaller devices, the cloudification, the increased uh, rapid acceleration of digitization and cloudification of our digital economy, these are the four or five trends that you can, in a sense, safely assume will drive the future uh, and growth of the internet in India. It's clear also that we have uh, today 80 crore Indians online and uh, very certainly by 25, 26, 
we will have almost 120 crores or 1.2, 1.3 billions connected to the internet and uh, and uh, using the internet for a diverse set of services, products, and other uh, other information that they seek out. Our approach towards uh, building the digital economy to be a trillion dollar digital economy and create a framework of laws which is two pronged. We, we have uh, already put out what we consider as one of the two prongs, which is the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill, which essentially codifies the right to data protection of the individual citizen, and but creates a, a predictable, easy uh, compliance, unintensive framework for those who innovate on the internet uh, to also continue to do what they do. Uh, whilst respecting the, the data protection rights of the individual. So that's one prong. The second very important prong currently is the IT Act, which will be superseded and replaced by a much more contemporary Digital India Act in the coming months. And this two-pronged approach will create the framework uh, that will guide the Indian digital economy and the digital, in the digital ecosystem uh, and continue its expansion, continue its robust growth, and hopefully, in the coming years make us the preeminent nation in all things innovation in the digital space uh, as we are on track to do so. This is broadly what I wanted to tell you in a nutshell about where we are going uh, with our government policies and where we think that the digital ecosystem will end up uh, in the coming years. We are at about 300 billion plus in terms of the digital economy today. It is uh, diversified significantly from 2014, where we relied uh, significantly on the IT and ITES uh, pieces of the digital economy. And today we have a very diverse uh, range of uh, slices of the digital economy that are all growing robustly. The IT, ITS piece, the startup and innovation piece, the electronics manufacturing piece. And now to that we are adding the semiconductor design, semiconductor manufacturing, the, uh, the AI, the blockchain, the blockchain and the Web3 piece, high performance computing piece. So we would see that the digital economy as we saw or knew or understood in the pre-2014 days will not be the digital economy going forward uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the coming years. Let me quickly also touch on my views on this whole issue of uh, digital media and the future of digital media. And we have some peripheral interest in, in that uh, because of uh, the fact, a fundamental fact that the internet in the early years uh, was always seen as a force for good. Uh, and it was really all about connectivity and connecting people, sharing ideas, connecting communities, connecting people to friends and families. And all of that was really the utopian idea of the internet in the early days of the internet. And that remained true for several decades after the internet was built out. And it is only in the last decade or so that uh, the internet has now begun to represent significant other challenges of uh, openness and the market uh, domination or uh, domination by some big platforms. The second is that there is now heightened awareness about user harm and the need for a focus on safety and trust on the internet. And the third aspect, uh, that people are beginning to become aware of is that as millions and millions of consumers uh, come onto the internet, use the platforms, consume products and services, that accountability to the little guy, accountability to the consumer is also something that needs to be built and legislated. And, and many of you in the audience will understand this, that for many, many decades, regulation and government lawmaking or government scrutiny or indeed societal scrutiny or oversight about uh, digital platforms lagged innovation because it was seen that these are all innovation platforms and they did not represent any threat. They did not represent any criminal uh, criminality. But today's understanding is that as much as these platforms and platforms represent good and can enable, can empower, they can also be misused. They can also be, uh, be forces for harm and, uh, and uh, illegality and criminality. So I think these are what shape uh, our discourse on what the future of digital media can be, should be. Uh, digital media is obviously, media as we know it, has always been viewed by consumers of media as being responsible, being accountable, being transparent. And that is how media was seen 
for many, many years and decades, and we've had legendary brands that were built around those uh, values of and tenets of uh, trust and credibility. And uh, somewhere along the line, with the digital media and digital brands proliferating, we have seen that those old values of uh, media have been uh, challenged or put to test. And I, in, in the ministry, in our ministry, we have done many experiments. And I want to just share this with you in the audience, where we have seen that newer D2C type of uh, media platforms who use misinformation, they use partially true information, create more velocity and much more reach for their content than traditional brands that still do the right thing and uh, do research uh, content and do content that is absolutely accurate. Uh, and so therefore there is a tendency in, in, in almost like a built-in incentive now, given the characteristics of misinformation and characteristics of, uh, of less than accurate reporting or um, that they reach a wider audience, they reach a wider audience faster. And that is a temptation uh, increasingly for even the, uh, e even the traditional uh, value-based uh, media platforms to adopt. So I think that is a challenge. It's not a challenge for the government. It is a challenge for the consumers. It's a challenge for platforms that believe in, uh, in doing things right. And this, this characteristic uh, of uh, the bad news or the wrong news traveling further and faster than the, the good news and the correct news is something that requires uh, our discussion and conversation and uh, discourse to see what we should do about it. So I'll leave that with you to think about. Clearly, the other big area in the overall digital economy is the economics of digital content, the economics of digital content, whether that's news or entertainment. And uh, there are certain uh, issues in the way the internet has evolved, where the power of digital advertising with ad tech uh, platforms controlling more and more of this digital platform, digital advertising revenues and monetization uh, revenues, that there is a deeply inbuilt imbalance into that whole dynamic. Uh, of uh, content creation and content monetization that leaves the small guy at a disadvantage and uh, and is really not the right thing for a country like ours where we have potentially hundreds and thousands of creative uh, uh, content creators and uh, and and many many true hard uh, you know value driven uh, truth driven uh, content creators in the new segment so I think this is an area, and I, I, I saw in today's paper, right in today's paper, that the gentleman from Australia, uh, Mr. Fletcher, who has commented on it, it is uh, uh, his thinking is not very different from how we are approaching this issue, and we hope to, in the Digital India Act, address this issue of the uh, the the disproportionate control and the imbalance in the dynamics between content creation and content creators monetization uh, requirements and the power that ad tech companies and ad tech platforms hold today. I, I won't uh, speak to too much more uh, on, on this issue, excepting to say it is clear uh, that at some point and at some inflection point that the consumption of news in particular and uh, content in general will swing sharply to uh, the internet, the COVID pandemic has caused one uh, big jump in the in the consumption patterns of consumers for uh, all types of content, uh, all types of news. Uh, the you can see from the proliferation of the OTTs, and uh, you can see from the proliferation of uh, digital streaming services, how entertainment has pivoted almost from the conventional uh, entertainment models to the internet-driven, digitally-driven entertainment. The same is true for news, and I suspect that uh, more and more video-led content, more and more uh, digitally video-led content will be the trend that we should all be keeping a close eye on uh, and, uh, and a sharp pivot away from traditional platforms that deliver news. But that is just my point of view. I am not a, a crystal ball gazer by any stretch of imagination. This is just my instinct that I'm sharing with you. Uh, but it is quite possible that uh, that that trend may be a long, more prolonged trend 
than something more uh, that something abrupt that uh, I, I am suggesting or uh, that I suspect will happen. I will leave it at that. I, I think uh, I will just end by saying that uh, we are living in extremely interesting times. I think the the digital space is only going to be uh, there's only one thing that you can accurately predict about the digital space. If you're operating in that, if you're in a stakeholder that that it will be uh, continuously disrupt disruptive. Uh, disruption will be the regular normal uh, for all things digital and all platforms digital. So uh, like we have just seen uh, in the last few months, the chat GPT phenomenon is going to turn on its head many, many conventional digital platforms, including search that we all thought had been uh, conquered and uh, the winner had been declared. But I think uh, the AI and the power of AI and the the learning platforms that are just going to now come out uh, in increasing numbers uh, are going to continuously disrupt uh, what is the leading platform, who's the leader, uh, and who uh, delivers what products, functionality, and service in what form. So I think uh, we, we are living, living in interesting times. I, with, uh, uh, I personally, after having spent over three decades uh, in technology, uh, find that <laughs> this the period that we are living in uh, represents more challenge and more opportunity and excitement than ever before. And so I, I will just alert you all to that and uh, say that, uh, that uh, you know, when disruption is a new normal, uh, being paranoid is uh, every day and every time is absolutely the right thing to do for your businesses and your uh, technologies and your platforms and your brands. So I believe that thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. I know it's been a long day, and I thank you very much for your patient listen. And uh, I wish all of you the very best uh, in the coming new year and uh, more success. Thank you. Jayan. Rajiv ji, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I think so. Apne apne 15 minute mein is puri ki puri news ecosystem ke sare issues, threats, opportunities, sab ko apne kafi achhe se rakha. Right from the menace of the fake news to the monetization issues, which all of us actually face on day-to-day -day basis. So we are really, you know, thankful to you for all of this. Secondly, we all of us, you know, especially you know, in the organized news media, are really, you know, looking forward to the new bills. And I must, you know, thank you, you know, on behalf of the entire body that you know the kind of you know initiatives which you know the government has taken to you know protect the interest of the organized digital media industry is really, you know, appreciated by all of us. And we really look forward to a new ecosystem where we have a much more level playing field so that all of us can again prosper and grow. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you.